Now joining us is the one credible bracketologist who still has BYU in the bracket. His name is Jerry Palm of CBS Sports. Jerry, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right, but you might want to check with me on Sunday. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so for the past you know months, we've been reporting on bracketology, and uh, you know for the past couple of weeks, we've been like, all right, BYU's out, BYU's out. They got to climb back in. They need a San Francisco game to have a chance. Got it. Didn't get in. Poof. Chance is gone. Or are we wrong? You still have BYU in the bracket as a 12 seed. What's your case for the Cougars to stay in as of now? Well, they've done reasonably well against the better team that they've played. That's not great. I mean, they're seven and nine against quad one and two. So that's below 500, but it's not terrible. And certainly there are teams competing for spots in the tournament that are significantly worse than that. The problem is the losses, the Vanderbilt, the Utah Valley, uh, Pacific. I mean, that's just, that can't happen. You know, just, just, you get a quad four loss in a league like this, uh, you know, even a good year uh, for the West coast conference. And it's been terrific. And really that's helping BYU right now, because, you know, there's four teams in this league that are at least possible NCAA tournament quality. Plus Santa Clara is not that bad either. So you know, the, the league being as good as it's been as deep as it is this year, unusually. So is, is, is boosting up both San Francisco and BYU uh, and giving them a chance. But, you know, the problem is one and two against San Francisco. You got a home and home split with St. Mary's and St. Mary's, you know, that's a good win, but you know, it's just right now it's, it's really close. And the fact that you're no longer playing, um, you know, while all of these other major conference teams who are around you on the bubble are, are still have a chance to play uh, really puts BYU in a vulnerable position. I like him at the moment, but like I said, check back with me on Sunday. Yeah, you've got uh, BYU four in right now. Give us a sense historically on the bubble in this situation. Okay, if you're barely in, like what the chances are of you being able to stay in depending on what happens around you and bid stealers, but also teams that were on the bubble that, that lose and maybe fall off. Yeah, and fortunately, there aren't a lot of bid stealer opportunities out there, so that's good. Uh, Murray State would have been one, but they won their league. Uh, Loyola won their league, but I don't think that that was going to be, I think that was going to be a one bid league anyway. So really the only one left potentially is the Atlantic 10 where Davidson is the conference champion. And if Davidson, you know, goes, it doesn't take a stupid loss here on their way through the conference tournament, but loses to say, Oh, a v, uh, VCU or a St. Bonaventure, then the a 10 would be a two bid league. And they might not be otherwise if Davidson wins a conference tournament. So that's a, that's a, uh, somewhere where you want to keep an eye out on something like that happening. But then, really, the, the competition is at the, the other bubble team. So, historically, it, it's a mixed bag. Some years are just better than others when it comes to how the bubble teams perform in their conference tournaments. You get Michigan-Indiana in an 8-9 game in the Big Ten tournament. So, you're probably rooting for Indiana because they're the weaker team in terms of their resume. They might actually have to win not just Michigan, but Illinois to get in, whereas Michigan might be able to get in just by beating Indiana. Uh, Rutgers is part of that mix as well. Rutgers is the four seed. So they're not actually, they got a double bye. Their most likely opponent is five seed Iowa. You would definitely be rooting for Iowa in that game because if Rutgers loses that first game, their chances are, are less of getting in. So, you know, the, these teams at the bottom of the bracket, the American Conference teams, SMU, in particular, but also Memphis, uh, you know, those teams that you're competing with are the teams that you want to keep an eye on. We're talking to Jerry Palm of CBS Sports, bracketologist who has the Cougars in, baby. We're all, we're all in on this. Let's go. Hopefully Sunday uh, BYU you is still in. <laughs> it's a lonely island right now. It absolutely is. Okay, if BYU doesn't get in on Sunday, what costs the Cougars in the end? Pacific. No question. They're in if they beat Pacific. It's just hard to play a quad four loss off your schedule. And Pacific is ranked almost 300 in the net. So that's not just quad four. That's pretty far down the list. That's, it, it's really hard to, to play that one off the schedule. I mean, Vanderbilt's a good team. You know, it, they're just in the SEC, so they're not good at, compared to the SEC, but they're not terrible either. You know, Utah Valley, I mean, that's an in-state game. It, stuff happens, but Pacific can't happen. That's the one, if BYU isn't in the bracket on Sunday, Pacific is the reason why. Yeah, and it's crazy because it's not like, you know, BYU is getting blown out in those. Creighton was one. You know, Gonzaga was one. Uh, San Francisco at home was another, of course. But it's like, ah, just right there. Obviously, injuries early in the season affected BYU. We felt like, like the Cougars were overachieving at one point. 
Then they, they're they almost in the top 25 uh, poll. Then they go to Santa Clara and Lewis, who probably would have been a tourney team if Rankage was healthy all year. Who knows? Could have been crazy. Yeah, and they're not a bad team anyway. Yeah. I mean, Santa Clara is an NIT level team, mm -hmm. which is part of, you know, the depth of this league being improved this year is that you're five deep in, in teams that are, you know, quality teams that you can still resume build with. Yes, this is the best it's ever been in the West Coast Conference. Every year they say it's good. Hey, this year was actually good, right? A, a three-bid league uh, for sure here. Okay, if BYU actually gets in, and, and it'll be barely if they get in, why did BYU get in, in your opinion? Because of the wins over uh, San Francisco and St. Mary's. I'm sorry, and San Diego State. I mean, that's, you know, that San Diego State's a nice non-conference win, and that's a team that's also – you know, near the bottom of the bracket. So it'll be the good wins. And and the fact that they, they had a good record compared to some of these other teams against teams in the top two quadrants and the top three quadrants. And that's, you know, that's really what's going to be what pushes them into the bracket because they're going to be competing with teams that don't have two wins over teams in the tournament. And, you know, uh, BYU's got three. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But it's uh, that those are the positives for BYU. Yeah, looking at quad one, it's wild. Uh, you know, four and six for BYU. And eight of the ten games are conference games. BYU only had two non-con that ended up being quad one. Uh, you mentioned San Diego State. That was at home. San Diego State barely in quad one at 29 right now. And then at Missouri State is kind of a sneaky game. So um, did, did B, was BYU's non-conference tough enough uh, or did it need to be a little, little tougher? Because I'm seeing some quad twos and then there are a couple losses there that perhaps are, are costing the Cougars? Well, their non-conference strength of schedule is around 100. So that's not bad. Um, they're, they're competing with, for example, Wake Forest, who's in the 300s. Uh, Indiana's in the 300s. No, those are teams that hurt themselves by playing poor non-conference schedules. And we see teams get left out almost every year, primarily because of that, that are near the, the bottom of the bracket. I don't think that's BYU's problem. Could it have been better? Yeah, maybe, but... I think if your strength of schedule in the non-conference is around 100, that, that's not terrible. By the way, Missouri State finished second in the Missouri Valley, part of a three-way tie uh, with uh, Loyola as part of that tie as well. And Missouri State was actually the two seed. Pretty good team. So that ended up uh, being a pretty good win. We're talking to Jerry Palm of CBS Sports. Uh, when it comes to BYU in the future in the Big 12, we've been looking at that situation with uh, great interest and realizing, oh, my gosh, just – hover near 500, play a good non-con, and you got a good shot to get in. That league is just ridiculously tough. What does it look like in the future, in your opinion, for BYU in the Big 12 as it pertains to March Madness? Going to have to get better. Just gonna have, You're going to have to get better players to compete in that league. That entire league, uh, one of the last time I looked, which was probably yesterday, the entire league was in the top 80 of the net. Mm. Now, that's unusual. I mean, that nobody is – is having a bad year. Um, it's all relative. Uh, they may only put six teams in the field, but there are no easy games in that league this year. So, you know, and then you're going to add, you know, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, you know, that this is a, this is a league that's going to add quality, but those teams are going to all have to step it up a notch to compete in the big 12 in places and playing in places like Kansas and Baylor, Texas tech, Texas, you know, there's a lot of good basketball programs in that conference, and the competition is going to is going to be uh, significantly more difficult than what all of those teams are used to seeing. And the recruiting, you're just going to have to get better players if you're going to compete in this league. Hundred percent. We look forward to it. One more year in the WCC. What are you watching the rest of the week as we approach Selection Sunday? That has your mo the most of your interest. Well, it's the teams at the bottom of the bracket because for me, I, I consider you know, as part of what I'm doing, the, the biggest priority is to try to get the teams right. And um, which I have a pretty good track record of doing, but so I focus a lot on the bottom of the bracket, but then the number one seeds there are six teams, maybe seven in play for number one seeds. Uh, Gonzaga will be one of them win or lose tonight. Uh, it's really a more a matter of whether they're the overall number one, uh, but uh, Auburn, Kentucky, Arizona, Kansas, Baylor, all, have reasonable scenarios that put them on the top line of the bracket. And uh, so there'll be a lot of attention paid to that as well. St. Mary's has a five seed I'm seeing, and then San Francisco has an 11. So three WCC team in teams in, and you feel good about uh, those seeds right now for, I guess, Gonzaga, St. Mary's and San Francisco. We'll be watching that as well. Yeah, it's, uh, 
I mean, you know, teams, well, you're, you know, the, that league will be done playing after tonight and teams can still move around uh, as other teams are playing. Uh, but, you know, you got to keep in mind that all but the conference champions are going to lose a game between now and Sunday. Absolutely. Jerry, we appreciate the time. Hopefully uh, BYU's in the bracket on Sunday, but uh, like you said, we'll check with you uh, again Sunday, possibly. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck. Thank you. We're going to need it. Jerry Palm of CBS Sports joining us here on BYU Sports Nation.